So in this video, we're going to take a look at the structured approach to programming and what we mean by well-documented program interfaces. So we've touched on this concept in various videos already, and this it's this idea that the larger a program it gets, the more you have to step back and take a logical, structured way to approaching and breaking down a problem. You wouldn't tackle the entire problem in one go. You would break it down into a series of smaller and smaller chunks until eventually each chunk is designed to carry out a single task. You can see here that we've taken a program called wages and then we've broken that down into a number of individual tasks such as get the number of hours, co calculate the gross pay, calculate the deductions. Some of these operations we've decided to break down further. For example, calculate gross pay is actually two separate operations. It's calculating all the normal wages and calculating any overtime. Now, structured programming involves creating what we call well-documented interfaces. What we mean by that is being able to take each of these blocks or chunks that we've identified and being able to work out the number of parameters that that would need, the data type of those parameters, the order of those parameters, and the data type of any return values if it's going to become a function. And once we've actually broken down a program into a structured way, as shown here in this diagram, this actually becomes quite easy to do. So let's take a look. If we start with the first block underneath wages, we need to write a procedural function to get the number of hours. Well, you can see I've identified that here get hours. It's taking in no parameters. This is simply a procedure which will store an integer, let's say in the range 0 to 60. Now let's take these next two down the bottom here. Calculate normal wages and calculate overtime. So calculate normal wages is a function because we know it's going to need to return the amount of wages that someone should be paid. But to do that, it's going to have to receive some information so they become the parameters. So you can see in blue there on the left, I've got calculate normal wages and it's going to receive as parameters the hours that have been worked and the hourly rate. It's then going to perform a calculation and it's going to return the wage to be paid. So we know this is a function and we know the parameters and the return values. In a similar way here, calculate overtime will take in the number of hours they've worked as overtime and the overtime rate of pay will perform a calculation and return the overtime pay. Both of those values which have been returned by the two functions we just talked about will then plug into or become parameters for calculate wages. So calculate wages would take in the parameters wage pay and overtime pay, would add those together and return a gross wage. So again, we've worked out this needs to be a function and we've worked out the data type, the number and the name of the parameters that are going to go into it and the return value. In a similar way, we can work out that both calculate tax and calculate national insurance will be functions. They'll take in the gross amount of wage, perform a calculation and return respectively the amount of tax and the amount of national insurance due. Both of those return values would then get passed in as parameters to calculate deduction, which would then return the total deductions. Moving on to calculate net pay, that can take into parameters the gross wage and the deductions. And once it's taken both those figures and performed its calculation, it can return the net wage. Finally here, we have to output some form of wage slip, either electronically or to send it to a printer. And in order to 
provide this pay slip, it's going to need to take in a number of parameters which have been used elsewhere. Things like the hour, the gross wage, the employer would want to know on their pay slip, the tax, the national insurance, the total deductions, and of course their net wage. However, we can see here that this section of the program won't be required to return any values elsewhere. It's simply taking in all these parameters and then producing a wage slip. So this is a procedure. So a structured approach to programming has the following features. It uses a module approach to designing a solution. Using subroutines, we break down a problem into smaller, more manageable chunks. Every subroutine should have a well documented interface and by this we mean the number of parameters, the data types of those parameters, the order of the parameters and the data type of the return values. Now there are several advantages to the structured approach to programming. Programs clearly are easier to write and thus a solution can be reached quicker. This makes them easier to test. The programs become a lot less prone to mistakes and errors during development. Of course, more than one programmer can work on a large program at a time. And if program requirements change during development, which is very common, it becomes easier to adapt and change if you've written it in this way. And the overall maintenance of the program becomes a lot easier. Thank you.